Hello everyone and welcome to this week's behind the scenes devlog video and this week I'm working on the final touches for Aquilinox and getting prepared for the launch of the game. Firstly, sorry for the lack of video last week. Last week I was just working on improving the batch rendering system and it was very dull and there wasn't really anything to show you, but I finally got that finished and implemented into the game yesterday and that's all working nicely now. So today and for the rest of this week, I'm just going to be working on the final tweaks and improvements for Aquilinox. So starting off today by completely finishing off all the help sections in Aquilinox, and this is like an in-game wiki, so you can look stuff up if you get stuck on anything. And uh, firstly, I had to write up the disease section because I hadn't done that yet. And then I've also just been going through all the sections and adding some relevant screenshots to them. So one of the final things that I have to do for the game before release is of course marketing and um, that's something that's quite new for me, I've never really done much marketing before but I'm excited to learn and uh, today I've just been planning for some of that by writing out some descriptions of the game of various lengths, some longer descriptions, some shorter descriptions, some one line descriptions and these are going to be for things like the website, for the steam page, for the press kit, for emails when I email youtubers and things like that and obviously I've just been trying to make these descriptions as nice and enticing as I can. But I'm going to get back to work on the game now, and I wanted to do a bit more work on the disease system, um, because as a few people suggested, I thought it would be nice to have a tree that drops fruit that can be used for healing diseased animals. Just finished making all three model stages for this new tree, which as I said is going to drop fruit which can be used to heal diseased animals. It took a while to make this model, I had um, a bit of difficulty getting it to look nice, but I think it's, um, it's looking pretty good now, and I'm just adding it into the game and doing all the settings at the moment. Completely finished doing all the settings for this new tree now, things like the description, the environmental preferences, how fast the fruit falls off it, where the birds can land on it, and everything like that. So this tree can only grow in specific jungle areas to make it a little bit more difficult to grow, and it's also quite expensive and slow growing. But if you do manage to grow it, then it will periodically produce this fruit, which can be picked up and given to diseased animals, and when they eat it, their disease gets cured. So that's pretty much it for development today, and now I need to do some cooking because I've got a few friends coming over soon. Wednesday morning, another lovely sunny day today, and it's going to be quite a busy day today. I've got lots to get through, so I'm just going to have a quick breakfast and then get straight to it. This morning I've been working on a few issues to do with terrain heights. Um, about a month ago I added some new options for when you generate a world. Uh, so for example you can choose how high the water is and how mountainous the terrain is, but there were a few unsolved issues to do with this. Um, firstly, some worlds would generate without any mountains, which was a problem because some species of plants and trees can only grow in high altitudes, so I had to make sure that every world had some mountainous areas. And also the second thing was to do with the terrain colours. When you start a new world you can see that the base colour of the terrain uh, is different at different heights, so near the water it's a bit more sandy and uh, up the mountains it's a bit more of a rocky colour, and I just redid the calculation to make sure that this works on both mountainous and flat worlds. So I'm going to stop for a bit now, go for my daily run in the park, um, or daily might be a bit generous, um, but when I get back I'm going to be working on making sure that Aquilinox can run well on all different display sizes. One thing that a few people have been mentioning recently is that on higher resolution displays some of the UI can appear a bit small because most of the UI has a set pixel size. So I've just been working on an option to enlarge the size of the UI um, and I'm testing it out here on my monitor and my monitor isn't particularly high resolution so it all looks a bit strange, a bit too big at the moment but it's all working in general. Um, the only problem I'm having is with some of the icons that were designed to be displayed at a certain pixel size 
they're now looking a little bit fuzzy around the edges because they've been scaled up. So I need to find some sort of solution to that. But I'm just going to stop for a quick lunch now, have the leftovers from yesterday. Um, but I am going to be able to enjoy it with some of the nice fresh radishes from the balcony because they were ready recently and I've been harvesting them today. Four o'clock now and I've still just been working on making sure that the game can run properly on different display sizes. And I've also just added one new option to the options menu, which is to make the display borderless. So as you can see, you can now have the game running in a borderless window. For the rest of the afternoon, I've just been finalising all of the text that's going to be used in Equilinox. So I've got the language sheet up on the right here, and this contains all of the text in the game. And uh, I want to get it all finalised because I need to get the game translated into other languages soon. And I want to start by just translating it into German, because that's a language that I know fairly well, so it will just make things easier for the first language in case there are any problems that I haven't thought of. And then after that, I'll look into other languages. So for now, if anyone's interested in helping out with translating the game into German, then uh, that would be much appreciated, and you can just send me an email to thinmatrix at gmail.com. So I'm pretty much finished for the day now, and this evening I'm going off to a really nice rooftop bar. Today I need to do a bit of work on the evolving system, which is one of the systems in the game that I've never really been happy with. Um, just very quickly, if you haven't seen it before, you can unlock new species by evolving your current species, and to do that you just need to meet a few requirements, and if the requirements are met then you can pay some DP to start the evolution process, and as long as the requirements are still met then the progress bar will fill up, and when the progress bar is full then the new species is unlocked. The problem with this is that the entity carrying out the evolution process can die in the middle of the process, and when it does that you lose all of your progress, and you also have to pay the price again if you want to start a new process. And that was always quite annoying, so today I've been making the evolution processes more of a global thing rather than a per entity thing. So you can see here if I start evolving a wheat uh, using this grass tuft, and I then kill the grass tuft in the middle of the process, I can start the process again with another grass tuft, and the progress was saved, so the progress bar started halfway full. Just been updating the UI for the evolution stuff a bit uh, for this new update, so if an evolution process is paused because the entity doing it died, it now says that in the evolution panel and you can see um, how far along the process was, and you can then continue the evolution process uh, just by pressing that button without having to pay the DP. Also, if I go to another grass tuft and go to the evolution panel, it now tells you that the evolution process for the wheat is in progress, and it also shows the percentage. Anyway, I'm going to stop for a bit now. Um, it's actually a public holiday in Germany today, so everyone's off work, so I'm just going to meet a few friends, go for a bike ride through the city, and uh, get some lunch, and then I'll be back to work this afternoon. For the rest of the afternoon I've just been finishing off the final little things to do with this new evolution system. So firstly, if the entity that's carrying out the evolution process dies, you get notified so that you know about it. Also I've added a pause button to the evolution UI here so that you can pause the process if you want to for some reason. Um, I also had to make sure that if you save the game, any current evolution processes get saved. And also, if I click on a different grass tuft here, um, one that isn't carrying out the evolution process, I can actually switch the evolution process to being carried out by this grass tuft if I want, if I know that the other one's just about to die. Just a few final little tasks to do today. For example, in the splash screen, I've just replaced the Equinox logo with this leaf icon because it was a bit strange having the logo shown and then fading out and then being shown again in the main menu, so I thought I'd show the game's icon in the splash screen instead. Not a whole load else to show you this morning. I've really just been doing the final tiniest tweaks and improvements. Um, for example, I've just been going through the resources folder for the game and deleting all the old unused icons, 
Um, if you have a look through the old videos, the UI for the game has changed quite a bit, and there are quite a few icons and images in the resources folder that aren't used anymore, so I've just been deleting them to make sure that they're not unnecessarily taking up space. But that's pretty much everything now, I don't really have anything else to do this morning. Um, I was just going to plant a few more radishes on the balcony and then have some lunch and then get started with the editing for this week's devlog video. So this afternoon I'm just doing the editing for this video, um, but I just wanted to talk to you quickly about the release of Equinox and what my plan is because I've been doing a lot of polishing for a long time now, I've been kind of putting off release because it's a little bit scary. I've been working on this game for a long time now, two and a half years, it's going to be the first game that I release and obviously I want it to be as good as it can be and um, I've kind of been putting off the release so that I have as much time as I can to perfect the game as much as possible. Um, the problem is there's always more stuff that I can optimise, there are always more things that I can tweak and improve, there are always more features that I can add. Um, I could probably spend another whole year just polishing the game, which I don't want to do. I mean, I kind of do want to do, but I mustn't. I need to release the game soon, um, and I can always add more updates after release anyway. So I think at some point I just have to go for it and stop worrying and just actually release the game. And um, I want to set a release date so that I can't really postpone this any longer. So I've already got a, a four week marketing plan set up where I've planned out all the videos that I'm going to upload, all the stuff that I'm going to post. Um, in the four weeks leading up to release, and I'm going to start doing that on Monday, which means that the Equinox release is going to be in just under four weeks' time on the 8th of June. So that's pretty much going to be it for this week. Before I finish, I just need to give a big shout out to the top Patreon supporters from last month, who were Austin Adamson, Roar Salberg Olson, Stephen Kemp, Danny D, Caffeine Coder, Clouded Dreams, Timothy Gibbons, Crazy Rusky, Wolfgang, Dylan Thompson, Andrew Wilson, Jeffrey Gounswad, Red, Charlie Quigley, Claudio Dimitri, Daniel Theon, Josh Gill, Dakota Berry, Michiel De Smet, Clayton Saracella, Alvin Daly, Alberto Spina, Sean McCrory, Benjamin Fuller, and Alexander Chavez. So a massive thank you to you guys as always, and of course to everyone else supporting me on Patreon. For this week though, that is it, so thank you guys very much for watching this video. Do subscribe if you haven't already, have a fantastic week, and I will see you all next time.